Hey guys, welcome back to Love Lighthouse. This podcast is, my intention for it is for us to have conversations that add love, light, positivity, and value to your life. One thing you may not know about me is I studied news in, in journalism. That's what I got my degree in. And I will never forget the day that I got an internship. I tried out for this internship. It was my last semester in school, in college. I was almost to the finish line of getting my degree. I was so excited to, to start uh, in in my career as an anchor, as a journalist, um, as a reporter, I couldn't wait. And I had shadowed a, a local anchor and field reporter. And I had asked her, she was actually a, a co-host on a local TV show. She was very successful, beautiful woman, had three children, has three children. And I met her, I became friendly with her and she was kind of taking me under her wing. I was a single mom at the time. I think she admired my work ethic and all of the things I had on my plate and my aspirations. And I asked her um, to kind of give me some tips. And, and so I shadowed her at the, at the local news station and I just was in awe of her. I thought she was awesome. I think she's awesome. Uh, and in my mind, I was thinking, hey, she's got children. So if she can do it, I can do it. And it must be a good fit for, you know, moms. And, and so I carried on. I, I fought for, I applied for a, an internship there. I had her stamp of approval and I'm sure she helped get the internship for me because there were many applicants in only two spots and I actually got it and it was it was something that I was so proud of I was so excited and I will never forget that day that I was sitting in the newsroom they do what's called these brainstorming, at least back then they did what was called these brainstorming sessions where all the reporters would go into this room with the management team and they would go around the table and they would all talk about these different ideas, different story ideas that were going on around the valley. And as I sat and listened to each person, I felt this heaviness on me because I realized that the most dramatic, the most painful, the most abhorrent story was the winner. And I guess that should be common sense knowing what's in the news. But at the time, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I was just excited to have this this challenge to get into um, a very challenging career and something that, you know, not a lot of people were able to, to get into or crack into. And I think that I was excited about it because I love spreading information. I love giving people tips and, and advice and anything that I have found of value in my life, I love to share that. And I've always been that way. If I have found something helpful in all along my journey, I, I would tell my friends and tell my family and I love sharing information. But what I found sitting in that newsroom that day, my internal guidance system was literally like going off like, eh, eh, like, like an alarm of like, Jen, run. You do not want to dedicate your life to this, to this career, to be submersed in this negativity. Uh, I also have to use the word smut because that's just how it felt. It just felt like icky. And, and so I course corrected and I remember getting in my car at the time I was a single mom and I cried from the news station all the way until I got off the exit 
um, cause I lived pretty far at the time. And then I got myself together, wiped off my tears, walked in, in time to meet with my kids. But I knew at that time that drive home, I knew I wasn't going to dedicate my life to that career. And this was something that I had spent all this time in school working towards. And now I was about to graduate and I knew that I was going to need to course correct because I realized that, yes, I was comparing myself to these other moms, but their motherhood was not really the idea of what I wanted. I didn't want to not be able to stay home with my children if they were sick or to be able to go to a uh, an assembly when they were performing at school or something like that. I wanted to be there. I wanted to be able to have the flexibility to, you know, attend those things and be there as a mama. And so not only that, but I also didn't want to be involved in, in spreading information and news that was really what I call now low vibe. And so I course corrected. And for a while, I felt like I had made a mistake and I remember thinking, what was I doing? Why did I make this plan? I should have known better. Why did I spend all this time, attention and energy going towards a goal? You've heard that, that saying of, um, I forget how it goes, but basically like having the ladder up against the wrong wall, you're climbing this ladder just to find out that it was up against the wrong wall. And that's kind of how I felt at that time. But now I realize that that's actually not true. That was good training for me. It was actually right before I was about to have an awakening as to my mindset and our power to create and understanding that that's what I was feeling is that negativity just felt like, oh, I got to get out of here. I can't submerse myself into this. And I, I could feel it. And so I also realized that that's actually my, that's innately who I am. That's my passion is to get information and share it with others, but only information that will empower, not disempower someone. And I believe the vast majority of news is disempowering because it uh, infuses fear into people's life. And fear is never empowering. It's always disempowering. And I now, oh my gosh, if I see a news segment, I'm just like, it's it's so hard for me to watch. It's like nails on a chalkboard for me now because it's always the same like storylines and it's like, they just recycle through them. It's, you know, constantly about like, just a lot of fear a lot of fear, a lot of violence. It's, it's interesting to me because we would never sit and let our children watch like, you know, some horror flick. Well, hopefully you wouldn't. Um, but yet our five-year-old can sit there with the news channel on when they're talking about things that are supposedly real and true stories, like true murders and having, you know, different scenes that you're like, whoa, this is, crazy that we would allow this into our lives on a normal basis. So, um, so that's, that's, you know, part of my journey, but I do love sharing things that add value to your life and your family's life. And I, I always encourage you to share in your life. If you find things that are of value to you, please share share this podcast with others, like, subscribe, and um, and share other things in your life that are valuable to, to people because this that's the ripple effect. And if we can learn things in our own life that help us and then shine that out to others, that to me is what life is all about. So today I'm gonna give you six things to increase your mood. Okay. And these are going to be things that you're most likely never going to hear from your medical doctor. Some of them are going to seem like, really, seriously, that's what you would do to increase your mood. And I say, try it. What do you have to lose? There's no side effects. 
And these are common sense things, but we've gotten so far away from common sense in our world that, um, that they might seem, they might seem a little, um, uh, you might raise an eyebrow to them. Okay. But try them. What do you have to lose? And really, this is the most important thing for us to do is to pay attention to our own joy, our own love, our own peace. That is how you heal the world. That is how you help the people in your life. If you're a parent or you're in a relationship and you're sad and you're struggling and you're miserable, that is, and I'm not saying this to um, put pressure on you. I'm saying this to put importance on your personal journey and for you to realize your power that you have to help those people in your lives. But if you are an umbrella of sadness or having a really gnarly time with your, where you're at in your own life, then make it a priority to really boost your mood, boost your healing and go on a journey. Don't prolong it. Don't put it on the back burner and, and, put the cart before the horse. This is what we do so much in life. We think, oh my gosh, I need to focus on my child because they're struggling and they're sad or they're having a hard time in their life. And so we try so hard to help them, but you can't help them if you don't do it for yourself because you, how are you going to teach them how to have joy? If you don't have joy, how are you going to teach them to be healthy or to, uh, have peace and love and forgiveness and all of those wonderful things that we want for the people we love. How are you going to teach them and guide them to that? If you don't have it for yourself, you must walk the walk first. So pull up a chair and let's dive into these things. First of all, there's so many things that we can do to increase our moods. And when we think about what people usually do if they're feeling if they're feeling down in our our western society what we usually do is we either ignore it or we run to the doctor's office and we get put on medication to put a band-aid on it to not realize what is even causing us that sadness i'm not telling people to not go to the doctor by any means but what I am telling people to do is so many times we get put on a road of destruction. And I don't believe going and signing up for, you know, a, a lifelong relationship of medication and not getting to the root cause of what's going on with your emotions and your thoughts and your feelings and managing them, I don't believe that it's it's healthy. And I don't think that anyone's ever gonna have a fabulous, fulfilled, healthy, nourishing life if they don't get to the root of what's going on in their mind and their heart. And, and really understanding some really beautiful ways to nourish ourselves. And so these, Powerful tips are so great with helping banish fear and anxiety, as well as several other negative emotions. So, um, so number one would be sunshine. How often are you getting sun? I was just talking to someone the other day who really, really struggles with depression. And I asked him how often do you get some sunshine? And he said, never. He goes literally from his car, his house to his car, drives to work, and then goes inside a dark building where it's there's not a lot of natural light. And he's there until, especially now that it's winter, it's dark outside by the time he goes outside. And so I talked to him about how important it is for him to get outside. Now, parents, OK, 
Okay, listen up. If you have a child that I would really think twice about putting any child or teenager, because those are tricky years anyways with their emotions and their hormones and all of the things, um, I would think twice about putting them in a basement room because the natural light is not very good downstairs. And um, just the energy of being downstairs is tricky for kids. And so you want them up where things are happening, where there's, there's movement, there's connection, there's, there's uh, communication, there's eye contact, there is hugs and laughter and life and more natural light. You want them up in that as opposed to alienating themselves, kind of going into their own space and um, trying to disconnect even more. I'm not saying it's not healthy to give your kids their space. It is. But with teenagers, I think that um, I've seen so many times where children start to, you know, fall into this space of sadness and Many times I'll ask them where their room is and it's downstairs. It's away from the family. And, and so getting out in the sun, getting natural sunlight, uh, even just, you know, being out in the sun for a good 10 minutes a day. I'm not saying to be out in direct sunlight and get sunburned, but what we do is we put glasses on sunglasses. We go outside, jump in our car. And we're not getting that vitamin D. So taking off the sunglasses and just being, you know, maybe even just a zip around your, your block, but getting out into that is really good for our emotional health. Okay. Uh, being around happy people. This is so important. So, so very, very, it has such a huge effect. So very important. If you are sad and you are around a lot of people that drain your energy and are also sad, whoa, it's like you're in a, um, a boat with a hole in it and, and you're all going down together. So you want to be around some people that are more supportive and being around happy people that, that infuse you with energy that's what you want to do. You really want to be mindful of the energy you surround yourself with. If you're hanging out with people that are always talking about all their drama and all their emotional downers, this will affect you. And also being around people that are gossiping all the time about others or complaining about their health and just how awful their life it is, then you want to make a change and you want to start to be around people that are more emotionally healthy for you. This doesn't mean that you have to expect perfection. It doesn't mean you can't be there for people in your life that are going through a hard time. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I don't mean a moment that they're going through. I don't mean somebody who's going through a divorce or you know, has a death, a death in their life, a death in the family or a job loss, something like that. Be there for that friend, be there and hold a space for them. Yes. But I mean, you know, what I, you know, those people I'm talking about. In fact, I want you to think right now, is there someone that comes to mind that drains your energy and they're just, it's like same, same, um, story different day day after day it's like they're they go from one relationship to the next that is just um drama 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 think about that because birds of a feather flock together so their energy is is either pulling yours down or supporting yours so it will really really help if you are around people that are also emotionally healthy exercise when we get moving, this releases endorphins into our brain, which leads to happiness. Notice how wonder you, wonderful you feel after you've worked out, after you've moved your body, after you've gone to, for a, a jog or a swim, uh, a hike, you feel good. It lifts, it lifts your vibe right up. So here's the thing. Many times people start to feel down. 
And the last thing they feel like doing is getting up and jogging or running or working out. So if that's you, that's okay. You don't have, I'm not telling you like to get your leg warmers and your headband on and go to the gym. <laughs> I'm telling you to just start, just get up, put your walking shoes on, go outside and walk around the block. Just get moving because it's going to help pull you out of that sadness. It's your job to manage your emotional health. No one can do it for you. This can be so hard and, and um, frustrating and feel, feel really heartbreaking for us as humans because we love people in our lives so deeply. We love our children. We love our spouse and our friends, our siblings, all of those people in our life that we love, but everybody's on their own journey. And so you must be the master of your own ship. And the best thing you can do for the people in your life that you love is to stay in your own lane, manage your own emotions. And if somebody in your life is struggling emotionally, that is their journey. You cannot drive for them as much as you want to, darling. You cannot drive for them, but you can be a beautiful example to them. You can show them the best example of a wonderful life. And so doing that, just pulling yourself up and out of, of sadness, of grief, of despair, you can do it, but you got to be the one to do it. And it truly is a ripple effect. You're, you're the umbrella for a lot of people in your life when they're in your space. And so, um, so just by getting up and moving your body and hanging out with healthy people that are emotionally healthy and getting some sunshine, those things are going to, to ripple out. Laughter. Watch funny movies, TV episodes, or live comedy shows. Find your, your vibe, find comedians that you resonate with, that you feel like are funny. I think comedians are awesome, but some of them are, my husband and I talk about this because, you know, you'll watch certain comedians that everybody thinks is hilarious or a lot of people do. And you're like, this person hasn't made me laugh once. They're very unique. It just depends on your style. So you got to find Find ones that you resonate with, that you connect with, and and then utilize them to help you. Let them be your mentors. Let them be your teachers. Let them be your personal uh, therapists, your coach, your counselor. It's free. Get on YouTube. Get on you know um, TV and watch their videos. Whatever you can do to laugh, it adds. They say it adds years to your life, but laughing is really, really beautiful therapy and really helps release that stress and increase those endorphins in your mind, in your body. So really good. Okay. Here's one you probably have never heard before, unless you're a little woo woo like me, which is awesome. If you are, <laughs> uh, wear yellow and orange colors. Okay. Color therapy is really powerful. Actually, my acupuncturist, he is straight from Shanghai, China. He is a brilliant man when it comes to health. I fully trust this man with health. And he actually tells me about color therapy. I've learned uh, about this from him. I've also read books on color therapy. And for me, I studied feng shui. I'm actually a feng shui, a certified feng shui consultant. And in feng shui, we learn a lot about color and how important it is in our life, how it affects our moods, how it can support our moods, or um, also induce maybe not so great feelings. So it, for example, if you have a whole lot of red in one room, it can be overwhelming and increase your heart rate and sometimes make people feel angry or agitated. Um, smaller pops of red can be good. It can be, it can be bringing in some passion and some excitement. So it's not like any color is bad or good, but 
color therapy is when you understand it, it can be really, really powerful. If you want to lift your mood, try wearing bright colors. Try wearing bright yellow or orange. Doesn't mean you have to get a yellow sweatsuit from head to toe, <laughs> but even just, you know, some pops of that. Um, also eating yellow or orange foods such as pineapples, bananas, oranges, peaches, mangoes, any of that. These colors, what they do is we have what's called chakras. Um, it's not talked about a lot in our world, but we have these energetic points within our body. And the solar plexus is right beneath your, it's your core. And that is your center for your mood and your, your, your will to live your excitement about your life, your, uh, confidence, your joy. It sits right there, that solar plexus. And, and so yellow helps feed that, which is funny because that's where your stomach is right there in your solar plexus. So eating, Eating yellow or orange foods can help that color therapy and it can help increase your moods. Also our sacral chakra, which is right below our belly button, that's that's orange. So we've got the yellow, which is our solar plexus, which is our core and then our sacral chakra. And so, um, you know, we forget that we are powerful, powerful beings and the energy that uh that we are made up of if we can support it we can shift things quickly so opening the solar plexus and and helping that uh in infuse that energy with joy can really really help okay the last one is to meditate and I don't, when I say this, I don't mean you have to sit in the corner and ohm for an hour. Just taking the time to slow down, unplug from all the madness in your life that could be piling on and making you feel more sad, more hopeless. Just unplugging from that mania and just closing your eyes and breathing just for a few minutes, even five minutes, taking time to connect with our spiritual self will help increase our joy so much. When we get too involved in the human experience and we start to look at things in such a limited form, that's when we really start to cut off our joy, our peace, and we, we forget who we are. And really the truth is we forget that we are powerful, all-knowing spiritual beings that came here to pretend. We're just pretending to play as a human for a minute. And when I say minute, even if you live to be a hundred, then from an eternal perspective, it's a, a blip on the radar. And so we're here to play this game. We, we were so excited to come here to experience this, the to experience the challenges and the adventure that life had to offer. So pull out of the seriousness, connect, meditate, get out into the sun, exercise, bring in some yellow and some orange into your life, laugh, and bring yourself around positive, supportive people. And these will make a huge difference in your joy. I promise you they will make a huge difference. This is what I believe. I believe that we should start here. We should start with these techniques. And then if, if we need extra help, then go and get those other things. But I think that if most people did this, they would never even need to go and search for anything else to bring them joy. If they could connect to the truth of who they are and do these, these nourishing things, then I think that it would make such a huge, huge difference in our joy. So do these things on a regular basis to maintain your emotional health and I go over all these things and many, many more things to support you on your journey. 
I invite you to check out my Awaken group coaching. It's a, it's a space where we learn, grow, and progress together. It's $33 a month if you get the yearly annual membership. So check out the link below and I will see you there. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.